Not with me. Anymore. Okay. Can everyone hear me? That's something that's safe. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So uh, well, feel free to interrupt me anytime. So today we are doing the presentation called the recipes uh, latest addition to Drupal. It is latest addition to Drupal because uh, latest Drupal 10.3 and 11 has recipe inside it, but there is not much about the recipes. So what we decided to do is to just talk about it. But first and foremost, we are presenting uh, from the terrible Jaeger and Jaeger people. And so I would like to pay respect to people uh, to, to um, traditional custodians of uh, the land of Brisbane. So quickly about me, uh, my name is Vladimir. Uh, sorry, is that Janet? Uh, I can't see. Oh, yeah, that's Jana. Jana, over to you. Is there going to be like a, a packing guy or Um, That's me. I'm just wondering, how can I navigate on your computer? Over? Are you... You can't. Uh, I'll I'll pass it over to you once it's your time. So I'll I'll do my thing, and then. Okay. Ah, oh, hi, I'm Jenna. <laughs> um, and um, yeah. So what's happening? Uh, just move on. Introductions. Again, okay. Um, I'm a Drupal developer from Brisbane and um, maintainer of all different types of themes and modules. And actually, I'm on a um, election board for Drupal Association from the community. So check check it out. Vote voting starts, I think, next week or this week until September. That's me. Cool. Uh, also, let me know if there are any other screens here because uh, Zoom put about like six extra stuff on my small laptop screen, so I barely can see the slides. And uh, if you can't see it much, so let me know. Okay, so I'm uh, also a Drupal, Drupal contributor. I'm a teacher. And I might drop out, as you might have noticed. So there is a bit of a math house here, though it was supposed to be public holiday. Anyway, uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, a couple of things. Before we jump into recipes, we're going to talk about reusability and reusability in Drupal. And uh, uh, after that, we'll do structure and resources uh, limitations and roadmap recipes. Okay, so quickly reusability in Drupal. So uh, reusability is a software developer principle. And basically, it means exactly what it means. So we can actually reuse something. We can use a piece of code or reuse data or reuse a uh, specific uh, thing. Uh, so uh, do not repeat yourself. This is also software development principle. You can read in depth about it uh, on Wikipedia. But the main aim is reducing the repetition. Repetition in code, repetition in uh, workflows and uh, uh, making sure we can actually reuse the code. Obviously, uh, in so uh, in open source software development, we've been doing that a lot. We are using a lot of Drupal code, and that's what exactly we're gonna do. But Drupal is content management system, so we actually uh, have already some tools uh, built there uh, for reusability. In fact, we have a configuration, we have profiles, distributions, and we have a uh, features uh, that I'm going to quickly cover in a um, quick summary. So first, configuration. Configuration is built in Drupal core. It allows you to import and export configuration, and it has lots of tools. As opposed to a data, uh, configuration is actually uh, something that we usually check in into the code and apply. So that's a great tool to you to use readability. Although again, it's not data, so not everyone can go and edit it as much as we want. We already have uh, a lot of files called configuration management, and it basically, as documentation put it out, it's a 
collection of admin settings uh, to determine how site functions. So configuration has been uh, uh, in the current kind of incarnation since Drupal 8 was released. There is a, a configuration interface that uh, actually allows us to uh, go import, export a single feature in the full archive as well. There are also different tools like command line tools that uh, allows us to uh, import and export things. Um, on my screen, it's an example of a single configuration script for lazy loading of the images. Uh, configuration come in all shapes and sizes. For example, when you create a single field, you would get at least two configuration files, one for field storage, another one for the field placement, depending where you put it, on which entity, and so on and so forth. So the configuration uh, out of the box in the core is pretty simple. It's uh, uh, dozens, if not hundreds of files dumped into the folder. Usually that sits not on a root. And then when we sync it back, it, import, it comes back. So for um, there were num there are a number of modules and tools that were built to help us to go and control configuration a bit more. I'm not a big fan personally of those tools, but they're quite popular. So the configuration split is the first one. Usually uh, uh, shows for different environments. So when you will need a different environment uh, and might want to exclude a specific config, uh, that's what this extension is for. Um, it basically goes and says, which config do you want to use where? and provide different configuration settings. Uh, another popular one is config ignore. So if you want to ignore a particular configuration and then apply it later on, a uh, good example would be uh, Google Analytics, where you don't want to check in key and maybe uh, set up different settings for your stage and production config ignore is a good module to do that. The next, we have a profiles and distributions. Core actually comes with an installation profile called Umami, and Umami is a recipe book. So it's a recipe magazine where uh, we can go and uh, see uh, examples of a lot of Drupal usages. Uh, so if you install Umami, you can see all that. Uh, basically, installation profile is the folder that can contain one or more um, extensions, such as theme modules uh, and uh, also can have an additional custom functionality and in this case content as well so you can read more about umami uh, here uh, in the drupal documentation pages and what it actually does but in reality it's just another extension that combine itself uh, multiple extensions. Drupal distributions are very similar, although uh, Drupal distribution is installation profile are there. In case of documentation, it actually says that the difference between distribution and uh, uh, installation profile is that distribution contains everything, including Drupal core. So, and uh, one of the examples of distribution is code conference organizing distribution. That sits on the Drupal uh, uh, .org and people have been talking about it in terms of organizing a camp or organizing a conference. It's actually have a lot of features for event sponsoring, stuff like that. So there, there is plenty of uh, developers documentation on creating distributions and also how to write installation profile. It's on there, so developer can easily go and check uh, how to do it, follow the examples and uh, all the particular features. The last thing I'm going to cover is the features. Features is a very, 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 very popular module. Still has 120,000 plus installations to this point, although um, it was a bit neglected in terms of um, it doesn't have Drupal 11 support yet. Uh, there is a lot of bugs, but again, this neglect comes with a if community wants kind of continue with it or not. Features had a quite versatile uh, interface where on the right-hand side, you can see the same configuration file and you can create packages, so to speak. Features is also great at uh, digging down and getting specific configuration. For example, if you click on the content type, it will go and find all the fields and field storages and field placements and put them in. Okay, so a uh, few issues where is currently visibility in Drupal. So especially when it comes to um, 
large chunks of functionality such as distribution and profiles, it's very hard to maintain. Uh, it's basically making sure that you not only can install the site, you also need to put update hooks if you wanna put uh, an update hook specifically. Uh, they vary in popularity. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, features might be popular by numbers, but in terms of bugs, it's also also very popular. And some of those bugs are sitting in the core from my personal experience for years and years and years. Uh, and now, uh, and there's, it, it, it's also a bit fragmented from my experience as a developer on different projects. One person prefer to put each small feature into a feature. So they end up with 200 different features, which are hard to maintain and keep an eye on. Another person likes to chunk everything in very blur in the line between the feature and blur in the line between the installation profile and so on and so forth. So those few issues, I guess, um, led to introduction of, uh, recent introduction of recipes. This is where I pass it on to Jana. All right, so now I have to, Share my screen. Yep. Probably oh. good, good. Okay, let's uh, see how that will work. <laughs> Fully remote. Uh... Oh, no. Uh, okay, that will not work. Uh, Zoom asked me to reboot my computer and redo everything, so. Uh, do you want me to go through the, the slides? If can, if, if you can just go through the slides, I can talk through them. <laughs> I don't have usually Zoom installed, so, uh, and this time I didn't want to open in the browser at all. Okay, recipes. Bring in the recipes in Drupal 10.3. Um, so there are patches available to uh, enable the recipes, um, and they already exist in the um, in your source code, if you uh, have a look under the um, core. Um, so there is a bunch of recipes um, in the web core. Um, they are just an experimental feature. Um, it, I don't think it's been run yet to enable any of those recipes yet. They're just there. Um, so there is some information on drupal.org about the recipes, which I will um, talk a bit later. Next slide. Yeah, so let's have a look at the structure of the recipe. What is it um, and what it is not. So it contains only installation, configuration and content. Um, it does not have any code, any controllers, any hooks, anything. So there is no code associated with the recipe. It's configuration only. So that's why it applies. Um, it applies the configuration and installs the modules and configures them and maybe creates content, but it does not, you cannot put any code into a recipe. Uh, next one. So uh, the recipe starts with recipe YAML, uh, which contains just the configuration description. Um, we won't show the code here. Composer JSON is not required. It's an optional, uh, but you can uh, add composer JSON. The content and config uh, folders are also optional. This is where the config of your uh, modules goes into config and content goes into content folder and next 
And how do you create it? Well, for now, there's only manually. Uh, there's a uh, very, um, the tools basically work in progress for creating um, the recipes. And next. And so this is uh, some recipe generator, which is um, um, work in progress. Um, a little module. Um, and it's probably something that you wouldn't have in production as well. Uh, they're more developer um, level on the modules. Next. How to apply a recipe, just a random command, which is like something PHP Drupal apply recipe. So it's not even trash command yet. Um, so it's, a, it's in the very early stages of development. Uh, next. Yeah, here you go. PHP script Drupal core. Yeah. <laughs> Type that into the... Um, uh, talking about the uh, site builders. Um, but I guess the work in progress goes that there will be a UI uh, for choosing the recipes, browsing the recipes, installing the recipes, and uh, um, exporting the recipes. So uh, next. And resources are very interesting here as well. So they are all over the place. So you have a Slack channel where there's a, um, a very active community uh, gathers. They have uh, meetings every two, um, two weeks or every month. So I think on 13th is, uh, so was uh, yesterday. There's a mega issue on drupal.org which just includes all the uh, meetings and notes and the direction. Um, and there is also another project, uh, which is a distributions recipes, uh, which also has uh, all sorts of issues in there and meeting notes. The documentation mainly is in Git uh, for the... Um, for the recipes, how to create recipes, what do they include, um, how basically everything about there. And uh, on Drupal.org, Drupal recipes is very um, uh, undefined, undocumented. So Drupal.org doesn't really have much on the website. That's where all the documentation is on Git at the moment. Um, and there is also um, this long, long, long URL on the bottom. This is a recipe cookbook. So it contains, um, you can just go and up update or create your own recipes and just add those uh, recipes into the list so that people can have a look um, what everyone else is developing. And uh, so this is basically the only... Uh, way to discover other people's recipes at the moment um, other than just browsing random people's um, GitLab repositories. <laughs> yeah, so that's the state of the documentation. So it's still um, still a lot work to, to do about it. There is a lot of... Uh, um, different types of um, presentations on YouTube as well about uh, recipes from the different um, Drupal cons or Drupal camps, but they basically cover very similar. Um, just go into depth into the developing recipes and coding, um, which is putting the configuration together. Yep, next. Yeah, that's all what they have for documentation on the um, on a Drupal.org. Next. And yeah, I had to actually ask to get the link, um, but there's it somewhere on the 
on the drupal.org maybe they updated it yeah so join the slack see what's happening on slack uh, with the recipes and if you um, can help with the development join in as well next um yeah so issues with uh uh, one thing that I found with the recipes, so imagine you need to install uh, some sort of uh, recipe, for example, for SEO or for uh, configuration of the Google Analytics. Um, so you will not be able to, you, you, you'll just get the um, configuration and the uh, module enabled, but there is no way to add any um any input into the uh, while the um, recipe has been installed. So, for example, if it, the, there is an issue right now um, on the user input, so when you install in the recipe, it, it can ask you, so what's your uh, Google Analytics ID so that you can type it in and it will already update the configuration for it. For example, that could be very useful. Um, that's uh, one of the issues that um, uh, they've been work uh, that's been uh, some work done. Um, but first, before they're gonna do that, there is another issue that's a bit more baseline issue in terms of uh, the recipe should reuse the current settings of the website. So, for example, if um, the Drupal configuration already has um, English as a default language or um, Australian time zone and if some other module requires a time zone to be set that will be reused um, so that's another issue that they've been worked on uh, the next uh, slide um, but what about if, if uh, the other issue that they find if uh, everyone just has um, uh, recipes, uh, they're just going to be um, millions of them. It's easy to create. Uh, so why not some modules create a pre-configured versions of themselves? So if you've had to use a uh, Drupal Secit, so security kit, it contains lots of different types of configuration and you can for security um, to enable security on your website, to enable headers, enable all sorts of parameters um, to make sure you pass um, penetration testing kind of parameters. Um, so um, when it's installed, it's clean and you don't have to, uh, everything is, you need to um, basically go and enable everything what needs to be enabled. But what if it comes pre-configured? So it, it's uh, um, a module when you enable it, it may say, hey, do you want like a strict security? So it will lock down all the um, parameters in, in that security kit or relax security where it's like, oh yeah, 50-50, for example, CTP um, security is not that strict uh, and some other parameters are not that strict. So it's just the whole module can come pre-configured already so that's uh, another possibility for the recipes uh, that may actually come from the developer of um, of the module um, so that's kind of my thinking um, next yep um, back to you Rob. thanks Jenna uh, yeah, so I just wanted to extend what John have been telling about and seems like a lot of issues that we're going to see. It's exactly the same issues that we are were seeing with um, configuration and what we're seeing with features and installation profiles. Like few good examples, it would be if you already have a content type and another recipe requires the same content type, what's going to happen there? It gets more complex with the fields, but if the field... Uh, uh, with the same name is di is different. Uh, what if the field with the same name is different from? Uh, uh, just give me a second. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, so the same kind of thing where it would clash with IDs, but not necessarily with similar. So same field name uh, would have, let's say, date and uh, date and time uh, clash, or it would have a clash of um, different types of text. Uh, so let's have a look quickly uh, at the uh, how we can use some hands-on demo. But before then, uh, just to finish up with issues, they're very, very new. It feels like the recipes were pushed into the core, but the direction is not, not very clear. As I mentioned, there is a mega issue where you can get it. It is work in progress. Uh, but there's definitely not enough documentation. There's two pages of documentation, the rest is scattered. So if you have a chance and if you are uh, trying recipes, trying to work with them, uh, uh, feel free to jump in and update the information. Uh, I think any bit counts. So a few hands-on demos, a developer, non-developer, and we're, then we're gonna talk about roadmap, which basically starts as a recipe ECA demo. So, uh, First, I'll open uh, the PHP store. In so, uh, John mentioned as well, the recipes are sitting in uh, core recipes. They are not being used, but the first one I find it's very easy to follow. So it's uh, administrational recipe .yaml. The plan is eventually to create recipes so the installation profiles like standard ayumami can follow the um uh, can have an instructions but in recipes rather than installation profile so this one is admin role and description of this particular code is provide administrator role uh, and we can follow the actions so there's user role administrator if the role already exist, then the action has no effect. If it doesn't exist, we'll create within the follows. So it basically has a parameter called create if not exist. And then there is ID label wait and is admin. So this one would actually work if admin exists and we can apply it multiple times. So we can see there is already a bit of thinking into the logic, but how far this logic would go when it clashes with something like PHP. It's also an interesting thing. Like, I mean, you can put a lot of stuff into YAML, but uh, eventually with things like that, it might become its own language, meaning that the developers need to onboard not only into creating stuff in PHP as we already do, but also creating stuff in YAML. And now to the actually the um, live demo on how we can create the recipe without coding. Okay, I have I have a demo umami installed here. Basically, uh, nothing. Uh, so just demo umami, nothing else. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to enable one of my favorite module ECA. I would say there would be a bunch of uh, modules. So I'm gonna uh, enable the modeler so we can see visual stuff, uh, content, ECA content uh, and ECA UI. That should be sufficient. So, and uh, we can create a simple business rule uh, we must install ECA BBM and ECA core. So two more modules required to enable those modules. But now we have a content. So uh, ECA is a business engine and it allows us to actually build the uh, reaction to a different actions. Yeah. There you see. There you go. Okay, so there is obviously no, um, nothing there. So we can quick quickly create uh, action and a reaction. Reaction should be simple, display, display, message, right. Uh, if you haven't used uh, ECA and especially ECA with this particular module BM4, don't worry. It's very similar to rules, just a bit more visual. You might even like it. So here in a reaction, we say display message and then we say, uh, hooray is a good message to display. Uh, I'm going to save that. Okay. 
and we didn't add the action. So action, because we enabled the content, we can say uh, edit entity or entity update. So it's very similar with hooks if you're a developer or it's basically a reaction to a specific thing. Uh, let me see if I can find edit easily. Is it? No, update. Update content entity. Yeah, sounds good. I can say a specific thing. So for example, I can say it's a content uh, block, basic block. So now what do we have? Probably, uh, it. Uh, it's nice we can see uh, so the module called event condition action so there's event block updated uh, action uh, we have a hooray uh, and in between condition we have no condition whatsoever because we actually had a condition of when con basic block is updated uh, so we're going to save that we didn't provide the name for this particular ECA model so here, what we're going to do, we're going to go to uh, general. Oh, make sure it's selected. It's a uh, test action. We can provide its own ID and save it. But now we have a test action ECA model, and it's available in here. So let's see if it actually works. Content box. Blocked out basic block. Oh, we don't have any basic blocks. Okay. Save. Do we have a hooray? Hey, here we go. So on the inserting, it didn't work. On updating, we have the hooray. Something that we just click and drag. But as we're talking about the recipes, uh, ECA uh, version two was so quick, they actually managed to add, uh, let me zoom it in. Uh, they actually managed to get in uh, the recipe generator. And here we have a test action. It basically, we know it relies on a block. We know it uh, reacts to something. So here we go, say, we can see export. And I cannot see anything else because of the zoom window. So <laughs> let me play around so I can get to it. Nope. I only can see export, if it makes sense. There. OK. So we can see there is an export as a recipe. So we can actually go and say export as a recipe. It says, uh, where do you want it? Do you want it temporary? Uh, and what's the name of the recipe? And what's the uh, namespace? So I put public recipe. So obviously, there is no save as just yet. But let's see if it works. Uh, I'm not sure if you know where your temporary folder is. It's, I assume it refers to temporary PHP folder. I had no idea. So when I save this first, it will push and disappear. So maybe it would be a good idea to add some sort of a description to make sure that it actually works. But if we'll have a look at the, if we'll have a look at the, our files, so that would be teacher files recipe. There you go. It actually went straight to recipe. I needed to add the name of the module. Uh, oh, sorry, name of the recipe, but here's our recipe here. So you can see it contains a composer. So it actually says that you need a query, you need ECA content. It contains a readme file, quickly generated something with the ID, contains the recipe YAML, which basically says, hey, uh, Here's what needs to be installed. And it contains configuration and configuration. We can see it's a block, but not block fields. It's a, a ECA model and ECA process. A very, very simple recipe and we can now reuse it and uh, send it somewhere else. So nice and quick. I assume there is more things would be coming in terms of the interfaces, maybe not to ECA, but this is a quick way you can now actually export an ECA. As I said, it's not full on solution because block does not contain the whole block configuration with the fields and stuff like that. 
but I'm sure uh, because it does require a lot of things to actually drill down and get all the configurations required, including forms and views, but it's a good start. So you can actually go and check out the uh, functionality itself. Uh, there is no import as a recipe, I don't think so. So this is just an XML model import. But that's, yeah, that's a little demo of uh, configuring uh, ECA. So, and uh, now uh, we basically have a, a roadmap. We have a couple of things to do. So first of all, fixing the issues. So if we go Drupal core issues, here they are. So if you feel like going there, the component should be a recipe system. So sort by recipe system, and there is plenty of stuff to do. Most of it would be going to Drupal 11. Uh, you can see there are some fixed for Drupal 10.3. Example recipe isn't functional. Uh, that's actually quite an interesting uh, issue to have a look and especially how to fix it. So if uh, I'm not going to dive deep into actual coding and fixing the issues, but there's plenty of, as you can see, there's a um, good uh, dozen of issues sitting there. So if you want to help with Drupal recipe, and that's the best way to understand it and also help to write documentation, that's probably the way to go. And yeah, as a thing, the last um, thing is the documentation. Uh, Jana, do you want to add anything to the roadmap? Um, so the next, uh, the roadmap as well uh, would include how do you discover recipes? How do you trust the good recipes? Um, who is uh, a trustworthy um, agency or developer to get their recipes from versus um, just random recipes? Yeah, and so that's the discoverability is another um, step um, on that roadmap. All right. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, I think Switch is going to post this talk uh, soon on uh, Drupal South. Just a reminder to uh, check out Jana's agenda. She is trying to get on an association board of directors. Uh, the, you need to be a member of Drupal Association, which helps keep Drupal.org up. Uh, but you also get a vote and you would be able to vote. There are, I think, eight candidates. They um, all been announced this week and I think election starts next week and goes for about a month. Check election all... tomorrow. Uh -huh, there you go. So no time to lose. And uh, uh, it's quite interesting. There are interesting selection of candidates, so feel free to go to this page. But also, Drop Times is doing uh, lots of lots of um, coverage of that, which thanks to Drop Times as well. Uh, do we have any questions? I have a question. So, what do you think about the future of recipes, considering the fact that? Uh, Starshot is supposedly very, very recipe heavy. Do you think that this is something that will really, really like progress a lot? Well, with the Starshot being that popular and that uh, it actually can drive the recipes um, development as well. On the other hand, if everyone is doing Starshot, all the resources might be diverted rather than doing recipes and other things. So it's just spreading ourselves really thin um, in terms of development distribution. <laughs> uh, so you don't really want to deliver something that doesn't have uh, documentation or clunky or doesn't work properly. Yeah, so uh, fingers crossed. Um, if if they are relying in, on recipes for the uh, star shot, um, yeah, then recipes do have a good future. All right. 
I'll say, I'll say it what I said a month ago uh, at the presentation about the documentation. There is no good software project without uh, good documentation. I agree. Or... Yeah, if, 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 for example, like it took me a while to gather all the details, how to run the recipe, how to create one, like how to create one is not too bad, but like how to run it, how to, how do you get it? Where do you get it from? If you found it on GitLab, how do you install it? How do you bring it in? It's still quite a um, um, sort of magic is in there. So um, it's still, um, it's still a work in progress, basically. Absolutely. Any other questions? I have one. Um, with recipes coming into like Drupal, do you think Drupal distributions will be phased out or they both will co coexist? Who is using Drupal distributions currently in and yeah, raise your hand if you're using Drupal distribution in production. Not really. Yeah, so probably not. The, uh, I'll add one, one thing for the Drupal distributions. Apparently 10.3 and 11 uh, should have uh, optional installation profile. So it means it would be easier to jump off and that might bring a bit of spike in the distribution thing. But saying uh, what is distribution, the definition might change. We might have a bunch of recipes, and that would be distribution, no, nothing stopping that. In fact, we're seeing that in Drupal core, they're actually trying to change the installation profile or distributions with uh, uh, recipes rather than a single installation profile. So technically not, but um, again, for distribution to be popular, I think the most popular one was commerce distribution back in the day. It has to have so much good help and also ability to update and constant testing and all that stuff. So it's uh, it's like a building system within the system, which comes with a lot of work. All right. Um, if there are not any more questions, uh, thanks a lot. Vladimir and Jana for the presentation. I'll stop recording.